Okay, welcome back. Now from today on, we're gonna learn some numerical descriptive techniques. This is the second part of unit three. So the second part of unit three is divided into these four parts. First one is matters of central location. And after that, we're gonna learn matters of variability. These two parts will be covered today. And tomorrow we'll learn some matters of relative standing. And after that, it's the matters of linear relationship. Okay, we'll have a discussion of these topics one by one. First of all, let's see the matters of central location. There are three measurements that can be used to measure the central location of the given data. First one is called mean, or sometimes we call it arithmetic mean. Next one is called median, and last one is called mode. Okay, let's have a look at them one by one. So first of all, let's have a look at mean. Okay, mean is by intuitive is the sum of all data divided by the number of observations, right? For population mean, we'll use this formula to calculate it. So first of all, we use letter mu to denote the population mean. Mu equals one over n. The uppercase n here is a population size multiplied by the sum of all observations. For population, for sample mean, the difference is here we use x bar to denote the sample mean. Sample mean equals one over lowercase n. Lowercase n means sample size multiplied by the sum of all observations. So the form of these two formulas are very similar. Actually, they're the same, right? only difference is we use different letters to denote population size or sample size. So please write them down in your notebook. And next, we're gonna see an example using this formula. Okay, I'll give you two minutes.
Okay, let's see an example. A sample of 10 adults were asked to report the number of hours they spent on the internet the previous months. The results are listed here. Manually calculate the sample mean. Okay, so here is a sample of 10 adults, right? This is a sample data. For sample data, the formula to calculate the mean is x bar equals 1 over n times the sum of all observations, right? Okay, so according to this formula, there are 10 adults, that means 1 over 10, right? And times the sum of all the data here. Okay, this is 0 plus 7 plus 12 plus 5 plus 33 plus 14 plus 8 plus 0 plus 9 plus 22. And this will give you 1, 1, 0 over 10, which is 11, right? Okay, this is not very easy. Uh, this is not very difficult to understand, right? Okay. So next, we're going to introduce the concept of median. The reason of that is there is a disadvantage of only using mean, right? The disadvantage is that the mean can be seriously affected by the extreme values called outliers. For example, as soon as a billionaire moves into a neighborhood, the average household income increased beyond what is was previously. So a billionaire is an outlier, right? So for example, in the neighborhood, the average income is around 40,000. If a billionaire moves in, for example, the billionaire could earn this much, which is a very large number. As soon as he or she moves in, the average household income is rocketed, right? So that means the mean could be easily affected by any outliers there, right? So this is the reason we introduced the second measurement, which is called median. Okay. The algorithm to calculate the median is listed as follows. So first, sort the sample in ascending order. Next, if the sample size is an odd number, the number in the middle is a median. Or if the, if the sample size is an even number, the average of the two numbers in the middle is the median. Okay, let's see an example. Suppose we have a sample of seven measurements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. According to the algorithm, Seven is a odd number, right? So the number here in the middle is the median. Okay, for another example, when n is 12, which is an even number, how to calculate the median here? First, we should sort all of this, this data in an ascending order, right? That means from the smallest to the largest, because 12 is an even number. So the average of the two numbers in the middle, which is 28.1, is the median, OK? Now you should be able to calculate the median given a set of sample data. OK, I'll give you two minutes to have a look at these. And after that, We'll see some concrete examples.
Okay, any questions? All right, let's see the next slide. So one of the question is how we how do we interpret the median? Okay, there are three meaning behind the median. First, the number of observations on each side of the median is 50% respectively, right? This is not very difficult to understand because first of all, when you calculate median, we sort all the data in the ascending order, right? From minimum to maximum. And the number in the middle or the number of the average of the middle two numbers is called the median. So on the left hand side of the median, there are 50% of all data, right? The rest 50% of the data lies to the right side of the median. Number two, the cumulative relative frequency at the median is 50%. This is actually an alternative saying of the first statement, right? If you have half of the data here, that means at the median, the cumulative frequency is 50%. Okay, number three, if we randomly select the number X in the sample, the probability of this number equals or less than median is 50%, right? If you draw a random number from all the data, the probability of this data lies within the median is 50% because there are 50% of all data to the left side of the median. Okay, any questions? No, okay. Let's see the third measure of the central location which is called mode. Mode is defined as the most frequently occurring value in the data set. For example, if we have a sample, uh, sample data as this, the mode is 26 because 26 is the most frequently occurring value in the data set. Okay, now there is a question. Why do we need to introduce uh, mode concept here because sometimes the data is not interval right for example if you have a data like this r r r r g b y x x usually you can't just calculate their mean right because there are no numbers there so you can't calculate their mean or you can't calculate their median either, right? The only thing you can use here to describe the central location is called mode. So basically for categorical data or nominal data, when you can't use the mean or median, you can consider using mode. So here the mode is R, right? Because R is the most frequently occurring value in the data set. Okay, and there's another concept here. If there is only one number that appears the most, the sample is called unimodal. That is, only has one mode. If there are two numbers that appears the most with the same frequency, the sample is called bimodal. That means only has two modes. If there are two more, <clears throat> two or more numbers that appears the most with the same frequency, the sample is called multimodal. That means two or more modes. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Next, the second group of measurements is the measurements of variability. There are four measurements. First one is called range. Second one is variance. 
Next is standard deviation. And last one is called coefficient of variance. So let's have a look at them one by one. First of all, range. Range is defined as the largest observation subtracted by the smallest observation. Okay, that means the distance between the smallest observation to the largest observation. For example, if we have a data set 444450, then the range is 46 because largest observation is 50. Subtracted by the smallest observation, which is four, then you get 46. 46 is the range, right? For another example, if we have a data set as 4, 8, 15, 24, 39, 50, the range is also 46 because the largest observation here is 50 minus the smallest observation, which is four, then you will get 46, right? So 46 here in the second data set is the range, okay? As you can see here, for totally different two sets of data, the range are the same, right? That means the range is not a very good offer, uh, is not very good measurement to measure the dispersion or the variability, right? So that's the reason we introduced the second concept, which is called variance, okay? The methods to calculate population variance and sample variance is very similar, but with some tweaking, okay? Let's see the population variance first. First of all, the population variance is denoted by Greek letter sigma square, okay? This is called sigma. Sigma square by definition is one over uppercase N. Uppercase N is population size times by the sum of all the difference between Xi and mu. Mu is population mean. We have just learned that, right? N square. This is by definition. Also, we can use derived formula to calculate the population variance, which is one over uppercase N times the sum of the squared Xi. Xi is each data minus mu square. Again, mu here is population mean, okay? For sample variance, first of all, sample variance is denoted by S square. S means sample. S square is defined by one over lowercase n minus one. Okay, pay attention here. This is not n. This is n minus one times the sum of all the squared difference between xi and x bar. X bar is mu of the sample. And we can also use a derived formula, which is one over lowercase n minus one times the difference between two terms. First term is the squared Xi sum. Second square, the second term is one over lowercase n times the sum of all the observations as a whole to the second order. Okay. It is suggested that we calculate sample variance using the derived method. Okay, I'll give you five minutes to have a look at these. And please write these formulas onto your notebook. But you'll be using these formulas to solve some problems. 
after this.
All right, have you finished? Let's have a look at an example. The following sample consists of the number of jobs six students applied for. 17, 15, 23, 7, 9, and 13. Find its mean and variance. Okay. First of all, these are sample data, right? So pay attention. The formula to calculate sample data is different from the population. Okay. So first of all, let's list the data here. For example, we use the letter X to denote the sample data. 17, 15, 23, 7, 9, and 13, right? Okay. We need the sum of these data. So let's calculate the sum. Sum is 84. Okay, I remember that in the formula to calculate variance, we also need the sum of all x squared, right? So we need to list all the values of x squared. These are 289, 225. 529, 49, 81, and 169. Okay, and next we we'll calculate the sum of the squared values. is one, one, three, four, two. All right. And first let's calculate the sample mean. Sample mean X bar is 84 times one over six, right? Because there are six data, which is 14, right? Okay, next, variance S squared is, according to the formula, one over N minus one, which is six minus one, right? Times first term is the sum of squared values, which is one, three, four, two. Next, is one over n, which is one over six times sum up all the values to the second order, which is 84 to the second order, right? So let's calculate this value, which is one, three, four, two minus One one seven eight. Sorry, one one seven six. And this will give you thirty three point two. Okay, so fourteen is mean. Thirty three point two is a variance. Okay. Any questions? No? All right. Let's see the next concept. Next concept is called standard deviation. This is not very difficult to understand. Standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Okay. For population, we use letter sigma to denote the population standard deviation. Population standard deviation is the square root of sigma square. 
for samples, sample standard deviation is denoted as S. S is square root of the sample variance, which is S square, right? So normally, if you want to find the standard deviation, first of all, you need to calculate the variance. And then you find the square root of the variance. Then you get the standard deviation, right? OK. Regarding standard deviation, there is a rule of thumb you need to understand and remember. Generally speaking, for the normal distribution, remember that for normal distribution, there is a 69, 95, and 99.7 rule, right? But generally speaking, this rule is also applicable if the histogram or the probability density function is bell-shaped. Okay, so this expands the rule that we have learned to bell-shaped distribution. Any questions? If you know that a distribution is bell-shaped, you can approximately apply this rule. All right, okay, I'll leave this to you after this class. Okay, next and the last of the measurement of the variance of variability is called coefficient of variance. For population, the coefficient of variance is denoted with uppercase CV, which is defined as sigma over mu. That means population standard deviation over population mean. For samples, sample coefficient variation is denoted with lowercase cv, which is s over x bar. s is sample standard deviation. X bar means sample mean. Okay, please write them in your notebook. Okay, any questions? No? All right. So, <clears throat> the reason why we introduced coefficient variance is that this coefficient provides a proportionate measure of variation. So that means it eliminates the impact of different standard deviation, right? For example, a standard deviation of 10 may be perceived as large when the mean value is 100, but only moderately large ones mean value is 500. Oh, sorry. Uh, it eliminates impact of the mean, right? For example, a standard deviation of 10 may be perceived as large when the mean value is 100, but only moderately large when the mean value is 500. So if we use standard deviation over the mu. That means for one unit mu, what is the standard
standard deviation that eliminates impact of mu, right? So sometimes you will see that we use the coefficient variance to measure the variability of the data. Okay, so any questions? No? Okay, if you have no questions, let's make a quick summary. So today we learned that for population and sample, we can use different measurements to describe their central location and variability, right? First of all, for size, population use the letter uppercase N to denote its size. For sample, it's a lowercase N, right? Okay, for mean, population use the uh, let Greek letter mu, sample use X bar. Okay, variance population use sigma square, sample use S square, and the formulas to calculate variance for subpopulation and sample are different. Standard deviation population is sigma, sample is S. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. And last, we have learned the coefficient variation. Population is denoted with uppercase CV. For sample, it's lowercase CV, right? Okay. And also, we learned that how to manually calculate mean, median, mode, and variance, standard deviation, and coefficient variance. Right? Uh, sorry. We also learned how to calculate range, right? Okay. So next, I'll show you once the data is complex, actually, we can calculate these measurements using a spreadsheet. Okay, for example, we can open Google Sheets or Excel or WSP. Any of these tools will do. So for example, let's make a new data sheet. Okay, for example, now you have a collection of student height. Uh, for example, we have 11 data here. So first of all, let's calculate their mean. Okay, for example, these are sample data. Okay, to calculate mean, the formula we are gonna use is called average. Okay, let's enlarge, <clears throat> enlarge this a little bit. <clears throat> so to use the formula first, we'll input an equality sign here and followed by average A, B, E. See here, then you can choose average. Then drag all the data in here or you can manually input A2 to A12, okay? In this way, you get the mean. It's simply the average of all the data here. Understand? Okay, next, we can calculate the median. This time, with the help of this tool, you don't have to manually sort all the data and find the very middle data or the average of the very two data. So this time, input equality sign followed by median. And then choose, use your mouse to choose this formula and drag this data in, which is A2 
to A12, followed by the red bracket and press enter. Okay, it happens that the median is the same with this mean for this data. So let's see if we change one of the data to two, three, zero, what will happen there? So as you can see here, two, three, zero is very large data, right? So when we enlarge this data, the mean is increased, but the median never changes. So this is the advantage of median than mean. When the data is influenced by the out layer, it is like, less likely for the median to be impacted by the out layer, right? Okay, if you want to reduce the number of decimals, just press this. Okay, next, for example, we can calculate the mode. Let's see if we have any mode here. Okay, yes, we have the formula to calculate the mode. So calculate the mode, again, input equality sign, followed by M-O-D-E. And you can choose three different formulas. There are some explanation in this formula, right? For example, mode means most commonly occurring values in the data set. So we can use this. Again, drag this data in. And you can see here's most frequently occurring data is 180, right? Because here we can manually see that 180 happens twice, which is the most frequently occurring values, right? Okay, so these three measurements are called central tendency. And for variability, first of all, we can calculate Okay, there's no, uh, first of all, we can calculate the range, right? There is no formula ready there for calculate range, but this time we're gonna simply calculate the max and the mean, and then calculate the max subtracted by the mean. The formula to calculate the max value of a set of data values is called max, okay? We can, we can use this formula to calculate the maximum value of this data. And then minus the minimum value, minimum value using the MIN formula to calculate the minimum value. So the maximum value minus by the minimum value, this is called range, right? Okay, next one, we can uh, calculate standard deviation. Sorry, for that, we need to calculate the variance. Okay. Variance, we can use VAR, this formula. So there are many formulas, right? So which one should you choose? Because it's a sample data, we can use this formula, VAR dot S. S means sample. If this is a population data, you can use VAR dot population. Understand? So because here we have a sample data, we are gonna use VAR dot S, this formula. Again, drag this data in, and this formula will automatically calculate the variance for you. Okay, next, we can calculate sample standard deviation. This time we're gonna use D, uh, STD EV. Okay, again, if it's sample data, you should, you should use STDEV dot S. Dot S means sample. Okay, again, put these values in. And this formula will automatically calculate the sample standard deviation for you. Okay. 
and there is no build up formula to calculate the coefficient of variance. Coefficient of variation. But we know that coefficient of variation is actually sigma over mu, right? Sigma is standard deviation. Mu is mean. So we can just use the division of standard deviation over mean to calculate coefficient variance, which is 0 0.0934, as you can see here, right? So this is how we can use a spreadsheet tool to automatically calculate these measurements for you, okay? So in practice, when you do your project, you can use such method in your combinating project. But for any test or assignment, you need to be able to calculate these measurements manually, all right? Any questions? Okay, if you have no questions, please have a look at these and start doing your today's homework. Okay, remember to upload any miss, missing homework before the end of the class. Okay. Okay, you can take a 10 minutes break and after that, please start doing our homework for today. 